Hello guys, welcome to another episode at IB Electronics World and today we are going to discuss timer interrupts. So very important is you need to always go to the data sheet for the specific microcontroller and go to the section that you are looking to, to work on. So in that case, we're going to open the family data sheet to the timer one. You can open also the timer data sheet as well. Also open the interrupt data sheet. But let's try to understand what the timer interrupt is. So the timer is just a module which has 16 bits timer, which can serve as the time counter for the real time clock or operate as a free-running interval timer counter. But let's try to explain it in a simple way. So interrupts call a function for you, which you have already created, and it executes that function once the interrupt, the interrupt is done. Then clear the flag and return to the main function. But I will try to write the code and try to explain step by step what we are going to do and how it will work. First step, you need to create a void function, which is going to call, be called as a init timer one, and it will be, it's not going to return anything and it will be void. And in this function, we are going to start writing the configuration for the timer and interrupt. So if you scroll down on the family dataset, you will see that the timer one control register has 16 bits. Again, most of them are in gray, so they are not used, or uh, most of them are readable bit, and writable bit. We are going to start with a timer on bit. The first thing we need to do is to disable that timer on bit because probably it's going to mess up with our uh, configuration. Go to zero, disable that. Next step is TSIDOTL stop in idle mode bit. We are not going to use any my um, idle mode. Uh, T gate, it's the timer gated time accumulation enable bit. We are not going to use again uh, gated time, but just in case to, to be sure that it's disabled, we are going to set it as zero. T gate equal to zero. Next bit is the TCKPS, which is the timer one input clock prescaler select bit. In that case is the, the division of the F FCY. And in our case, we are going to set it as zero divided by one. I will explain later on why divided by one. So our target is to achieve a one millisecond timer one in interrupt. Next step is TSYNC. Now this is for the external flow. We are not going to use an external flow. We are going to use an internal flow FCY, which is the TCS. The TCS is equal to zero. So going back to the block diagram here, as we can see, the time block diagram has the FCY signal, which is generated by the previous uh, configuration for the FRC oscillator. And then it goes to the prescaler divided by one. So we have 40 megahertz here divided by one. It's almost 40 again. 
And where did I find this number? It's to the FCY, which is equal to 39.99, uh, which is 40 megahertz. And this has been created from this configuration clock, the PLL pre, div, and post. So if you remember into the Excel file I was using last time, so you can see by using these numbers, it gives us the 80 megahertz and the FCY is the division of 2, if you divide the 80 megahertz to 2. Let's go back to the diagram, and here we can see that almost the 40 megahertz, it will go to this point here, and it will go to TMR1. So we need to include the TMR1 on the top, which is going to be the disable flag, TMR1, zero. And again, the TMR1 goes to the comparator, and then it has another input of PR1. So we need to include also the PR1. In the PR1, we need to add the number of the FCY, which is going to give us the result of the one millisecond. Let's try to understand how I found this result. One divided by this, it is equal to almost 25.049 nanosecond. And then We need to do, yeah, which is the first five digits of this number here, multiplied by the result of this. And it's equal to around one millisecond. And this is going to be the timer one. But in order to finish that, we need to include the interrupt configuration. We need to go back to the data sheet. So here is the interrupt priority control register zero. And this is the timer one interrupt priority bits. So the highest priority is number seven, which is 111, and the lowest is. 1, which is the priority 1. And if you set it to 0, it's going to be disabled, but we don't want to disable it. In this case, we need to say that we are going to add a priority number 2. two. Going back to the data sheet, we need to clear the timer interrupt flag. Timer 1 interrupt flag status bit. So we want to request, we want to clear the flag, so we need to set it equal to zero. And now we need to enable the interrupt, which is in the rent sister interrupt enable control. By adding this bit, we have enabled now the timer one interrupt. And finally, we need again to enable the timer one. Next step, we need to include the attribute I was discussing in the previous episode. So the attribute exists in the data sheet of the compiler. In our case, we are using XC16. And this is how uh, is the prototype declaration. So you need to include that bit here, void attribute open parentheses interrupt auto PSV. And then you need to include um, the name that you are going. For instance, we are going to use a timer one. You need to use timer one interrupt. If you are going to use ADC, ADC interrupt. The first thing you need to do once you are you have created the attribute, you need to clear the timer interrupt flag. 
So this means you will copy this and then you, you can add the routine that you would like to execute. So as I explained in the beginning, so it depends what we are going to, to include in this attribute here. Let's say, let's actually try to turn on the LED and turn off the LED. So here it was the previous example with the LED number two, we are toggling an LED and we have 100 millisecond delay and I have create for the LAT A4 an LED which is connected to the oscilloscope and you will see that the time it will be it will be one millisecond so it will start toggling every one millisecond because it will execute that it would go again to the main and it will go back and execute again and again and again every one millisecond. Let's build the code and upload it to the microcontroller. The program has successfully loaded. Let's open the camera. And as we can see now, uh, the LED is blinking and it's connected to the A01. So if we go to the data set on the top, a01 and we have connected also the third pin from the end RA4. So the RA4, the number three, it's connected an oscilloscope which is the LED1 oscilloscope. We can open the oscilloscope and it's as you can see one millisecond, almost one millisecond, yeah. That was the video for the timer one uh, interrupts. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, please add below. And I will see you in the next episode.